This is Quick Tips from the Metal Roofing Learning Channel, brought to you by Western States Metal Roofing, where you can find a variety of colors and finishes, all while saving by buying Factory Direct. Use of the following video content is subject to the warning, disclaimer of warranties, and limitation of liability as set forth on this screen. So in this segment, we're gonna discuss a parapet wall coping cap. We're going to use this configuration for our assembly and then we're going to use a spring cleat for the front which makes it really really easy to attach coping cups especially on long runs. Um, this is the shape we're going to use. It also creates the half inch watershed for the roof water to shed into the roof internally instead of forcing it to come externally. And then we're going to also put the splice plate with a quarter inch gap between the two for thermal movement. First thing we're going to do is we're going to cut this front cleat, cleat to size. And then we're going to pre-drill the holes uh, 12 inches on center because that is what it's, it calls to do this type of product. And then we're going to trim this piece off, cutting that. Our pieces are eight foot long. So we're going to cut it down to eight foot. Also, we always use a minimum of at least one gauge thickness more than the cap itself minimum of 22 gauge and you're probably a lot happier with 18 or 20 gauge on your project. There you have it. So now we're going to pre-mark our 12 inches on center for our screw pattern. Go about one inch in on the end to put your first screw and then 12 inches on center is just fine. So now we're gonna attach the cleat to the front of the uh, cap uh, for the parapet wall cap and then we're going to attach this also it's a good idea also that if you over bend this one or two degrees that way it hugs the front of the building better because sometimes you know how the building fascia will be in and out if you over bend it it has a tendency to follow it and hold the line straight and making it look good even when your building isn't good Coming down to the end, flushing it on the end of a piece. Make sure that you're up nice tight against there. All right, so at, we're at this point, we're getting ready to install the cap, and what we need, we are using an exposed fastener with a neoprene washer on the back end, so we do need to pre-lay out our hole at our 12 inches on center, like we've been talking about throughout these videos. Um, what we're gonna do first, we're gonna start in with a six inch off the end, and then we'll go a foot on center from there. Double check it just to make sure we're pretty close. Two inches, two inches, two inches. Pretty close. A 
the coping cap is ready to be installed. Okay, so when you install the coping cap, you're gonna to wanna to use a splice plate in the middle and you wanna put a quarter inch gap in there for thermal movement. So this is our splice plate and on our splice plate, we put two beads of caulking on each side. It's going down front to back for that water barrier. There we have that. That is gonna be put on the center line between the two pieces. Okay, so we're gonna take this piece and we're gonna put it on our center line. Our center line is marked here on our eight foot wall. So we're gonna put that on here. We're gonna set that on here. This is our half inch rise for our coping cap. And then we're gonna take our coping cap and we're gonna slide that piece right over the top. And just like that, it goes on just like that. This cleat in the front creating the slope for the coping cap, your two beads of caulking underneath. And it should be literally that easy. We're gonna put the other coping cap on. All right, so we're getting ready to put our final piece of cap, parapet cap on right now. I pre-drilled the holes in this last piece. Make sure you grab your tape measure. We usually put a quarter inch gap right there in between the two pieces of coping cap. That way when they heat and they shrink and they contract that they don't jam up and get caught on each other over time. You run your fingers under the bottom. You can feel whether or not that hem is made contact with that cleat before you snap it in the caulking and make a mess everywhere. You wanna just verify that you can run your fingers through there. I'm gonna come over here. It's about a quarter inch gap right there. We're gonna go ahead and put the final smash on the back. Now your coping cap is nice and clean installed. It's catching your cleat. You have no flex in it. If your coping cap is too, too tight, it will flex and it won't sit down properly. Now, after everything's all done, now we can put the fasteners through the back. Make sure you use your drill and not your impact because you don't want to over amp on the neoprene washers themselves. Finished coping cap. You can find step by step installation videos and homeowner guides on our channel. And don't forget to show your support by hitting the like button and subscribe. Want to learn more? Check out these videos.